is Pastor George Pearsons, and welcome to this very special edition of the Believer's Voice of Victory, Faith for Our Nation. And we are talking about the primary elections that uh, various states are experiencing, as well as the upcoming a midterm election, which it is so important that we vote, that we vote. And I want to mention this before I, I introduce our guests again, but uh, you can go to americastands.us and there's much information that you can get on there. The primary election dates, the political platforms, voters guides. Um, there are some notes that I have on there about messages that I've preached based on the political platforms, as well as election dates that are coming up by state, by candidate, by position, prayers for our nation's scriptures, and all of the outlines that Bishop Butler has been teaching on these broadcasts are going to be available on this website as well as the kcm.org. You can download them absolutely free. They're yours because I'm sitting here as a pastor thinking to myself, listening to Bishop Butler, hmm, I think I'm going to be preaching these in our church when it comes time for election to inform our congregations. And I also would like to inspire our pastors to show these broadcasts to your congregations. This is yeah. vital. This is so important. Show them, show them to your congregations, post them, get them out there because this is the very information that we need to be able to make an intelligent decision, a, a, a godly decision about our responsibility to vote. So on our broadcast this week, I have my co-host, Buddy Pilgrim. Buddy, so glad to have you on here. Thank you, George. And then Bishop Keith Butler. Thank you, Bishop, for being with us. This has been so informative. If the folks have not been watching us, they need to go back on kcm.org and watch these broadcasts to get educated on what we need to know about taking our responsibility. So Bishop, I'm going to throw it back to you. Let's get right into this. You've got some very soul stirring and shocking things you want to tell us. Uh, and I really want to encourage people. If you're, this is the first day you're, you're hearing this. You really need to go back to one Absolutely. and two. Absolutely. Because we're building off yeah. of a base that yep. we were talking about. Yep. Amen. Yep. So we're talking now about issues. So if you turn to Isaiah okay. uh, chapter one, and of course, uh, as you're turning there, we were reminding people of what the Bible said, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease, and your vote is a seed that brings harvest That's to right. you. That's right. Here's another issue, because uh, this issue covers federal, state, and local. Isaiah chapter one, verse 24. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, ah, I will ease me of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies. And I will turn my hand upon thee and I will purely purge away thy dross and take away thy, take away thy tin. Uh, and he says this because they were operating in the curse. Mm -hmm. And God says, now the time is, time is turned and my hand is coming back up, okay? And, and I'm going to bless mm -hmm. you, all right? And I will restore thy judges yes. as at the first Boy. and thy counselors at, at the beginning. After that, Thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment, her converts with righteousness, and the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together, and they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. Judges are absolutely oh, critical. Yeah. Yes. I mean, politicians come and go, but in some, in some quarters, judges remain for life. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now some judges are appointed by politicians, but some judges are directly elected. Yes. And they're usually on a bad ballot. You know, nobody even know the judges. Now. <laughs> Don't know nothing about the judge. But, in, and today, that's ridiculous. You can Google and find out about anybody mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. okay? There's a lot of bad stuff about having such an open society. But one of the good things is, when it comes to leadership like that, you can find out about uh, an individual. Judges really matter. And again, seed time and harvest. Yep. Man, what judges decide determine everything from where your kids can go to school, what their curriculum, curriculum's gonna be, whether or not you can speak speak about biblical things. And I mean, you can go on and on, on. They almost make law. Did they? In fact, in many fact, of them they do, do make, make they law. Do make they're law not supposed to. They are not supposed but to. But they yeah. do. Yeah. They yeah. do. Yeah, you mentioned the America Stands website a minute ago mm -hmm. and those uh, voter guides that are on there. Right. So right. few people know about judges. What you were just saying, 
that makes those voter guides on the America Stands website so vitally important because most good voter guides in include information yeah. about judges and what they believe in, what they what their voting record <laughs> is you know, on key key issues, in particular key Christian issues. Yeah. It's so important for them to look at those voter guides, not just on their congressional candidates and the senatorial candidates. Mm -hmm. Look at them for those judges. States like Texas, you know, in Texas, mm -hmm. we vote for the judges in Texas. Mm -hmm. They're not appointed. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you, I want to go to a voter guide and I want to read what that guy's record is mm -hmm. to make a decision. And as pastors now and ministers, we are we have freedom to be able to help people yeah. in these decision processes. Yeah. We have a, a great, great man in our church who ran for family judge and he won. Mm, praise God. And, and I have a feeling I know why. <laughs> well, you, you, you have to remember <laughs> when a state Supreme Court <clears throat> justice or, or a federal judge or, or, or US, United States Supreme Court judge was once. They yeah. were once a local judge. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. They start right. somewhere. <laughs> they started somewhere usually. So uh, again, this is uh, vitally important. Here's another one, uh, Proverbs 22, since I'm running you through scriptures right yep, now. Thank you. Uh, and uh, running through issues right now. Proverbs 22, verse 7 uh, says, The rich rule up over the poor, mm. and the borrower is servant to the lender. Mm -hmm. Here's another big issue. Not just where do people stand on national debt or local debt? Spending your, your children's money. Yeah. It's immoral for a generation to spend all of their money, put the debt on them, okay, for our lust. That's wrong to do. So you want to wow. know what, wow. and see, this matters even at the local level, not just yeah. national debt. When I served on the Detroit City Council, uh, they were big in the deficit spending, borrowing, <clears throat> borrowing, borrowing. And I told them when I was on the council, yeah. I said, you can't keep borrowing this money and kicking this can down the road and there not be a consequence. There's going to be a consequence. Well, you know, it's on deaf ears. Well, a decade and a half later, bang, Detroit went bankrupt. How many people lost jobs? Mm. How many people's mm. homes were affected? How many, all of that. Once again, seed time and harvest. Yep. Harvest came yeah. back for you voted for, for politicians who will not make hard decisions and do what is right for the people. You are elected not just for your political benefit, but for, and not even just for your generation, but for the health and well being of generations down the road. Yes, yes. And so yes. you make us a servant. And so Detroit wound up being at the mercy of, uh, you know, all these creditors yeah. and, and a lot of things that had to happen that were very painful, that hurt a lot of people because of violating this principle. So this is another issue in which you want to uh, look at. Sitting here listening to you, yes, sir. this happened in the last broadcast. We're listening to you. The Lord brought to mind something that I'd never made a connection to before. It was education, not of my own kids, but education of other kids. As I sit here and listen to this, mm -hmm. you know, that verse, Proverbs 7, Proverbs 22, 7, the rich rules over the poor and the borrow is the slave to the lender. The verse right before that yeah. is right. train up a child in the way he exactly. should go, and even exactly. when he's old, he'll not depart <laughs> yeah. from it. Yeah. And by the way, here's what you need to train him up in, <laughs> that the rich yes. rules over the poor. But here's what yeah. really just jumped in my spirit a minute ago. Yeah. I, I never thought about this relative to the issue of debt. What does the Bible say about a good man and yeah. an inheritance? Mm -hmm. A good man leaves an inheritance oh, to his buddy. children's children. Now, every time I've ever thought about that verse, I've thought about it relative to me making sure I leave a financial inheritance to my grandkids, okay? Not to my kids, because I want my kids to be wealthy enough to not need my inheritance. I'll just skip over them and leave it to the grandkids, okay? I want my kids to already be prosperous, but yeah. I've always thought about that in terms of my personal line of inheritance. That has to do with the, the nation that we leave our kids as well. Absolutely. And the Bible doesn't say leave your grandkids a nation exactly full of right. debt. That's, that's, that's exactly what jumped right. in my spirit. That's exactly We're to right. leave our nations. kids yeah. a nation that's yeah. not in debt. We're to leave a, a good inheritance to our grandkids. Boy, oh, and we're not headed down that path. Your state and your city. I just gave you. Yeah. Now, thank God Detroit's come back now. And uh, now she's, uh, she's having a revival econ economically. And thank God for that. But there was a ton of pain that took place. Yeah because of it. Let's talk about another issue. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 19, 17, since I'm, you wanted me to run through some of the issues, so, yep. so I'm running through them Thank for you. Thank you. Uh, Proverbs 19, 17. He that have pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord, 
and that which we had given, will he pay him again? Well, another issue is God cares about the poor. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. And this is not one you normally hear in, in some circles. Okay. But God does care about the poor and God says, you take care of the poor, you lend it to me. Yeah. And so uh, now obviously how you handle them, there's a lot of different ideas about it. Okay. I'm not getting into those weeds today. Yeah. Okay. But, but the whole issue about caring about again, people other than yourself, love your neighbor yeah. Bible as yourself. Well, if your neighbor is less fortunate, there's reasons why. Uh, and your vote can have something to do with it. Their education, mm -hmm. their training, mm. yeah. Yeah. their various survival, yeah. what kind of schools they are allowed to go to or not yeah. go to. I mean, there's a whole host of things you should care about the poor, okay? And you want to know what a politician thinks about that. Now I'm about to stick my foot in one that I'm pretty sure y'all going to get some mail on. Turn to Luke 22. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm about to put my boot in it. Okay. <laughs> Because people don't normally think of this as a biblical issue, but it's right here in the Bible. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to back up and here we got the Lord Jesus, right? So Luke 22, 33, and Jesus says unto them, Lord, I'm, uh, or, or uh, Simon says, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both from the prison and the death. And he said, I tell thee, uh, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day, but thou shalt deny me three times. And then Jesus said to them, when I sent you without purse and script and shoes lack you anything. Well, that's when he sent them out two by two, right? Mm -hmm. okay, he sent the yeah. disciples out, they're gonna send up the 70 out later. And now he said, now when I sent you out without nothing, you didn't have no purse, you didn't have no script, you have no shoes, did you lack anything? No, why not? Well, we'll see in a minute. Then he said unto them, but now, cause he's about to depart. He that hath a purse, take it. And in the same way, take his script. And then he says something you would never think come out the mouth of the Lord Jesus. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and go buy a sword. <laughs> okay. Oh, here comes. What? Uh, here it comes. <laughs> Jesus said that. Uh, here it comes. Well, what is the purpose of a sword? Yes. Purpose of a sword is for self-defense. Yeah. Okay. Now he said, he said, as long as I'm here, as long as I'm on the earth, you don't need nothing. I'm leaving. And so now, mm. get you. It's in fact, sell your garment and go get you one. Okay. Mm. Well, somebody, somebody said, well, I thought the Bible said thou shalt not kill. Well, first of all, you need to read the Hebrew on that because that's not, actually not what it says. King James doesn't do us right with that. That word there is thou shalt do no murder. Murder mm -hmm. is the killing of an innocent. Yeah. Mm. Okay. But somebody who is trying to take your innocent life, the life of your child, your wife, uh, <coughs> folks in the church or whatever, somebody, yeah. demon possessed individual trying to kill you, you have a right to use your sword. Now, of course, back then they had a sword. Uh, today we have a Glock or a Smith and Wesson, or whatever it is. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but uh, uh, but right. what he's talking about here is the is the right to defend yourself, right. and this is in the Bible, and Jesus said it. You want to know what a politician stands on the right to your own self defense? Yeah. That's a biblical right too, yeah. and and, yeah. and uh, the Bible is right there in it. And so, uh, uh, I love you, George. But if you were crazed and demon possessed, and you came, you came <laughs> <you're not. laughs> with, with with a knife to try and steal and try and kill Deborah, mm -hmm. okay, I'm gonna take you down. <laughs> okay. Now after you're down, then I'm gonna lay hands on you, see if I can raise you from the dead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, but, yeah, thank you. <laughs> or if you're hurt, I'm gonna get you some medical attention. But I have a responsibility to protect myself, my children, my wife, and government. Yeah. Okay, but thank, thank God, because we, the Bible tells us about God sets police. Okay, it's right there in the book of Romans and it tells us that God calls them. But if uh, you got somebody in, in your house and they're about to take the life of your child or rape your daughter, okay, and you got 30 seconds to deal with this, the police got, the police are two minutes away. Well, the police may catch the rapist or they may catch the killer, but you'll be dead or your child will be raped. Yeah, you can't defend yourself with your robe. 
<laughs> but, but you can with your weapon. A robe ain't much of a weapon. Yeah. That's why he said yeah. sell it and buy a weapon. Yeah. Jesus said it, and uh, like I said, uh, you know, if you y'all get a bunch of mail on this, I'm sorry, but <laughs> it, it's right here in the Bible. I, <laughs> yeah, you're I, leaving. I, time. I'm not apologizing for the Bible. Well, God said yeah. what He said, and mm. Jesus said what He said. He knew what He said. What He was saying. Red. And somebody says, "Yeah, but, but then Peter got on Jesus. Uh, Peter, uh, Jesus got on Peter's case for cutting off Malchus' ear. Right. Well, why? Yeah. Because there was a time for everything. Yeah. 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 All right. Peter didn't yeah. understand. This was part of his failure. Satan desires to sift you as wheat. I'm praying your faith fail not. Peter didn't understand there was a divine plan. Okay, he fell asleep instead of praying. You remember? Watch. Okay, the flesh is willing, the spirit. Yeah, well, that's good. You know, that's the good. flesh is weak, the spirit is willing, and so forth. Uh, well, so yeah. he missed what God was trying to do. Jesus was supposed to be taken to fulfill our righteousness. Right. But on the other, but on the other side of that, uh, you know, God gave them a right to, to use the sword. These these examples you're giving are so specific of how if we'll stay in the Word, mm -hmm. the Word will give us direction on every single one of these decisions from mm -hmm. caring for the poor, which basically the Bible, there is no place in the Bible that I've ever found, I don't think it's in there, there's not a place in the Bible where it says it's the government's responsibility to take care of the poor. It's the church's responsibility and it's our individual yeah. responsibility yeah. To, to take care of our neighbors. It is not the collective responsibility of the government to take care of the poor. That instruction is given in the Bible and now I know another place that even a weapon to defend yourself yeah. is in the Bible <laughs> thanks to today's <laughs> lesson. Well, well, let me say something though about the issue about the poor because because most churches don't involve themselves in taking care of the poor. Mm -hmm. And most Christians are not involved in doing that, so the issues fall in the government. So, yeah. until that's taken care of, yes. okay, then I think the next best thing is that we have to, the government's got to participate in some kind of way. Yeah. Uh, now, again, to what extent, what methodology you use, what's the best way to go at it, is right here also yeah. in the book. The Bible says there's a promise of God that covers everything regarding life or godliness, including dealing with the poor. So, that should, I think, also. Yeah be upon our, our uh, radar, praise God. Let, Amen. Let me, okay, before you go to the next okay. issue, um, if you would tell that story that you told me, the gas station. Which one? <laughs> Were there a number of them? Oh, me? With you, yeah. Oh, okay. All right, yeah. well, there was a, uh, I was, now I'm, I want to also say this, give some background to this, because okay. it was 1 a.m. in the morning. Right, yes. Okay, yes, and yes. I don't suggest you get gas at 1 a.m. in the morning. I don't care anywhere. Yeah, okay. Okay, I was driving a new car at the time. Yeah. So I did pull up at, uh, uh, at the gas station. I really don't want to say too much about this, but uh, I, I pulled up at the gas station to get gas and I did see a car Mm -hmm. uh, on the other side, pull up, and I see there's two guys in it. Well, I pay attention to my surroundings. Okay, so I see them out my peripheral vision, and I see an individual gets out and start heading my way. Now, there was nobody out there. There wasn't a soul out there. There was nobody out there, you know, except maybe the guy in the gas station, maybe. Sure. And this guy's come advancing towards me, and he's, you know, He's coming here, hey man, such and such and such. And I know exactly what's up. I mean, I do have a little bit of background, friend. I knew what was up, and so when he got uh, close enough to me, because I knew this was a car Jackson, and uh, when he got close enough to me, I just kind of uh, let him know what was going to be the end result of <laughs> this attempt, and I'll just put it that way. Uh, and he got the message in a hurry. <laughs> 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 and uh, uh, made a, a hasty retreat, uh, et cetera. Well, uh, I'll, I'll just put it like this. Uh, uh, I'm not going to be a victim. And, uh, and sometimes we miss God. Now, I have been in a situation where my life has been spared multiple times. And most times it has been the Lord told me about something, and so I wasn't there, so it didn't happen. Yep. But we're all human. Sometimes we miss God, don't hear the Spirit of God, get distracted, okay? And we have to then have another methodology or way right. if we miss all of that, that right. could still potentially save our life. I obviously missed hearing from the Lord that day, but I did have 
preparations. You were ready. Well, let, let me ask you this. We've got th about three minutes left. Instead of going on to the next issue, we can pick that up tomorrow. But let me ask you this. With all of the, the gun situations that go on in our nation, and then with each and every one, there, there's this, we continually revisit the whole gun issue. Mm -hmm. H how do you deal with that? How do you answer that? What do you say to your congregation, or what, what do you see? Uh, well, my congregation knows where I stand on this, so. <laughs> right. At least the vast majority. They may not all agree with me, but they know but where I stand on this. But how do you answer those who are, who are coming down on uh, self-defense mm -hmm. and the use of, of handling of a gun? Well, how, do you, how, do you say, how do you deal with that? Well, from the Bible and the writings of John Locke, you have the Constitution of the United States. Mm -hmm. the, the framers of our Constitution were very wise in setting up uh, this constitutional republic. And uh, uh, the Second Amendment to the Constitution is not by an accident. One of the arguments against it is that, well, the Founding Fathers never thought we'd have such lethal weapons as quote-unquote assault weapons, which there's yeah. no, no such thing yeah. that the civilians have. <laughs> but, but assault weapons and all of that, well, come on, folks. I mean, the, the uh, framers of the Constitution knew that there would be an evolution of weapons. There were evolution of the type of weapons while they were alive. During, during the revolution. Yeah. And the, the Second Amendment's purpose is particularly twofold. A, the people there uh, understood that a tyrannical government, Britain at the time, uh, was forcing themselves against them and the only way that they could throw off this tyranny was that they, the civilian population had to be able to have arms to do so. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's the first reason for the Second Amendment. And people don't really understand that anymore, but that's the reason for it. You could have government become such that it has to be overthrown, and the first thing every dictator does is take weapons, number one. Yeah. Second reason is for your own self-defense, okay? Yeah. The Second Amendment also protects the First Amendment, okay? Free speech, yeah. freedom of religion, so forth and so on, all those. If you lose the Second Amendment, there's nothing to keep, keep them from shutting your mouth and not allowing you to speak. Mm -hmm. Okay, this issue is far larger than your own personal protection. Yeah. See, so yeah. I do walk them through that, okay. Um, okay. Uh, et cetera. Uh, and then finally, the things we've been saying, like the, re the shootings that happen in schools on us, the failure of government to protect citizens in the first job of government mm -hmm. is the protection of a citizen. Okay. This, uh, this thing about the FBI not taking care of business, sheriff's office not taking care of business, school administrator not taking care of business, knowing you got sick individuals uh, who have access to weapons and not dealing with it, the gun didn't do anything. The people the did. The people did it. Yep. 30 seconds. What do you got? It's wonderful. I mean, I tell you, there's just a plethora of topics here to go on. Yeah. These these broadcasts go by so fast. Yeah. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I hope you come back tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Bishop, for that. That really, that really, really has helped us. You know, it is our responsibility to vote, and that's what we're going to do. Listen, we'll be right back with you. You stay with us. What a time we are having here. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.